Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com and in this video we're going to do a Volkswagen for Dummies video. I haven't done much of these videos in the past and I'm thinking I'm going to get a series going with this and basically go through the basic motions of a vintage Volkswagen. We'll probably go year after year sort of thing or year specific sort of thing. This is a 1956 oval window ragtop Beetle and we did this car for a client named Mike and he's based out of Texas. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through the car the basic functions of it and I'm sure there's going to be things I might miss and if you guys want to add to it you're more than welcome to put it into the comments section below and we'll go through the car and I'm going to show you how to operate these vehicles because I think this is a basic time period back in the 50s and we live in a time today where we're high tech and we got phones and we got social we got Instagram all that stuff and we maybe overlook things a little too much and we split hairs a little too much so I'm going to show you how this car operates the basic functions of it and um, my good man Jericho is behind the camera and he's going to follow me around and uh, I guess let's get to it. Okay, so 56 Beetle here. Now this is an American bound 56. So yes, it should have had the bullet front turn signals down here on the fender. And you guys have seen examples of that on my website before, but there's a bullet turn signal that should have been down here. The client did not want that. He wanted the turn signal in the headlight where the parking light would be. So here's the parking light that has now been turned into the blinker and I put an, an amber bulb in there for him. Some people just like the cleaner look of the fender and they don't want the blinker. So again, yes, I'm classic VW Bugs. We do things stock, but depending on what the client wants is what we'll do. So of course he didn't go with the American style bumper either, which would have had the towel bars. And so we went with more of the Euro look. If you have a real true Euro 56, you would have had semaphores on the car and you would have had this front look just like this what you see here so but as we come around what we'll do is let's pop the trunk and yes guys the trunk is in the front so ice pick door handles here on the 50s models kind of like an old refrigerator pretty cool symbol open like that and you'll see there's a knob underneath the dashboard see this pull knob right here this is what pops the trunk so you pull that and you usually hear let go and then we'll come around the front there we go all right so on these early beetles you have a prop here that's it on the one side of the hood okay no springs like happened later on in the 60s they had springs that you know the the hood got uh lifted was lifted up so you have this prop here and you got to pull it this way to lock it in place kind of like an elbow this is where you fill up all right, here's a humpback gas tank. Before this, you would have had a square gas tank. And wouldn't you know, I had a client that I built a car for, and it was a 54 Beetle. And when he got the car in California, his one question was, what's this big square thing in the trunk? So this is what I mean. I mean, as early as these cars are, there's some pe people today got to be reminded of how simple they are and where things are. So that's where your gas tank would be. Now, in New Jersey, they have what, um, full service. So I, you always get a guy from the, who works at the gas station to pump your gas. I try to get in there, and I want to do it myself. So I basically just counterclockwise turn this cap, and then there is your gas tank. All right, this is where you put your gas in. Now, when you're going to fill up, do not fill up higher than the neck, okay? I pretty much stop my gas at the bottom, at the neck level. Okay, the bottom, right under the, the top of the tank. Do not fill up to the tippy top on these old beetles because you have tendency to, the gasket will hold the gas to a point, but if you don't have a good gasket on there, you might spill over. So, and just make sure too, it's always good to put a little bit of lube on the gas cap here so when you put it on, you can turn it well. Because if you do have, uh, if you do have fresh paint on your gas tank, it might be a little more difficult to turn uh, the gas cap. So, all right, so closing the hood. What do we not want to do from the get-go is push down right now. Common problem in the 50s, the props that, are, that stay up, you have to move that prop back in order for the hood to go. Too many people then close this hood and they wind up kinking the hood. I actually had a detailer one time on my 51 split window beetle come to the shop and detail my car. He had the hood up. He went to go close the hood and sure enough, he pressed down too hard and he kinked the whole hood. I had to paint the whole hood. So... Easy operation, just push lift up, 
push that back, and then the hood goes straight down. And when you drop this hood, it should go right into this latch here. And it's always good to lubricate, put some grease in there to let this fall. You hear it just falls right in, okay? And usually just a small push and you're locked. You don't have to force it too much. Pretty much you could just push down on it and it clicks in. But that's really it. It doesn't take much to lock that hood into place. Um, so like I said, on these earlier Beetles, you had the ice pick door handle. And a way to lock this is just with the simple key. There's nothing fancy here. You just turn the knob, you turn the key 180 degrees, and that locks your door. And that's basically it. Nothing fancy there. There's no pushing, there's no pulling, just in and out. Then we got pop-out windows here. So this was a dealer option. These are brand new pop-out windows that you can get on the market today, and they're pretty good quality. I really like them. Um, again, a dealer option. So I do have a video on how to install these on my YouTube channel, so do check that out. I'll probably have the link in the description below. This is how you close these, I'll show you. It won't go in right now, and it's tough to push in because it's tight. So you just gotta turn this knob counterclockwise just to loosen it. And then the handle goes in just like that. And then on the inside, you push the handle up against the wall here, and then that latches. But then when you want to come back out, push it all the way out, pull the, push the elbow in this way towards the outer part of the car, tighten the knob so it doesn't then fall back in. All right. So then on these years, after late, well, late 55 onward up until about 61, you had this honeycomb tail light. So that is the running light and your brake light and blinker all in one. So there's no backup lights, there's no reverse light, anything like that. So um, on a six volt system, kind of tough to see at night, you know, if, if your grounds aren't good, but when you have a 12 volt system going and these lights got really bright. So we did convert this car to a 12 volt car, which is pretty cool. So here's the deck lid here. Basic W deck lid that happened that lasted until 57. After this, after 57, they went to 58. They got rid of the W deck lid. But we still kept this T handle up until 64. So come a little closer here. I'll show you the T handle. Some people have some problems with the T handle operation, but it's really not that not too difficult to do. So basically you're just turning this this way, counterclockwise. Just be careful. A lot of times aftermarket bumpers are too close to the lid and you tend to hit there. So just go up slow. I also have a video on how to modify your bumper so it clears. So here's your engine compartment, but here's the latch of the T-handle right underneath the deck lid here. When you look at this, you gotta make sure that before you go back down and latch it, your mech needs to be in this position, not this position, not down, because then you're not gonna be able to latch. And then sometimes these are even cockeyed. I've seen them come, they're out of this groove here. They slide up and down this groove, and it's very common to chip the paint, unfortunately. It just rubs the paint, the mechanism, you know? So, and I don't even have this on too tight. It's pretty much on finger tight here, this nut. Uh, but you see how this operates. That's how it's supposed to operate, guys. So whenever you have the deck lid up and the T-handle in the open position, this, this tongue should be closest to the lid here, the edge of the lid. Just like that. So that's how it operates when you close it. So you want it to be up and you want it to be up in this position. It's always good to put a little grease here, a little oil, make this thing lube all right. And it's going to latch into this tongue down here. Now it's so common that this chips. It's, you know, the, the paint always chips on these things. It's very difficult not to get it chipped. But uh, you could put a little rubber grommet if you want or some, some sort of an, um, maybe another lubricant to help that slide a little bit better, but it's so common the way that's chipped, so. But this is your basic 36 horsepower motor. This is exactly what the client opted for, so it's a period correct uh, motor. It's not the original motor. And we did go with the Abarth muffler with the, the, the four tailpipe tips. You get that muffler from wolfsburgwest.com and that's, you're talking about 600 bucks right there uh, just for the muffler. And it was a dealer option. So if anybody asks you, yes, it's a dealer option. The market today, there's guys on the samba.com, you even find them on eBay. Uh, they're selling these uh, regulators and generators as a combo unit. It's a six volt body, but with, with 12 volt guts in it. Early 356 Porsches had this setup. So this is a 12 volt system, but it looks the part. It looks six volt. 
really cool situation there. Basic, I know, check the oil. Again, Volkswagen for dummies. Here's your dipstick right here, guys. You just wanna pull that out right there. And then here's your lines here. You see a line down there and a line here. And it looks like we're actually even a little bit low here. So maybe we can use half a quart to raise this back up. There's your line right there. You don't wanna go over that. You don't want too much oil. And that's your dipstick. That's it, it goes right back into that hole right there. And again, 1030 weight oil is the most common oil that we use, very basic oil, no synthetic blends, no, none of that stuff. Your generic basic 1040, 1030 oil, something like that, or straight 30 weight oil um, is, is wonderful for these cars. They're very basic motors. They're one step up from a lawnmower. So you don't have to go too crazy with oil on this. So just keep it at that. Now you want to do a valve adjustment um, and set them at four thousandths for, for the valves. Oil change every 3,000 miles, valves every 6,000 miles, tune up every 10 or 12,000 miles. But those were the, the cues to do that stuff when you were driving these cars daily. But as a show car, which is what this is most likely going to be, I pretty much check every, all that stuff once a year. So I'll change the oil once a year. I might do 2,500 miles a year on my Beetle or something, but you don't like oil sitting too long, so I'll put fresh oil every, every spring. And uh, that always seems to work out well. Um, check the valves, check your plugs, your wires, all that sort of thing. Because if it's sitting during the winter time, I don't like when things sit. It kind of you got to check up on it afterwards. So, but uh, on an everyday scenario, if you when you were using this car in an everyday situation like you were back in the day, every 3,000 miles, every 6,000 miles for valves, and uh, tune-up was every 10, 12,000 miles. So, and uh, this is where you add your oil. Come on over here. And I'm very simple. I had a guy ask me, what does OEL mean? And that's, that's oil. <laughs> um, you just turn the cap counterclockwise, pop that sucker off. I know these are very, to some people out there who've been in Volkswagen scene for a while, it's very basic uh, knowledge here. But um, to be honest, I mean, it's so simple, it's uh, difficult to some people, I guess. But uh, and that's where you insert your oil two and three quarter quarts of oil that's it nothing more so where we left off with the oil the extra the extra little bit you have left in that quart of oil so the two and three quarter quarts of oil goes into the motor the remainder will go into your oil bath air cleaner so if you come down over here just clip these clips off just like this it's probably best to even take the uh you can take the air cleaner off right here with this little screw and that'll pull this loose I probably won't be able to take it off because I'll hit the top of the deck lid, but this little helmet here comes off and there's a line inside the oil bath, a red line, and that's how high you fill the oil till. You'll, you'll see that, but uh, always do that after every oil change. You change the oil in here. That basically traps the dirt and stuff. So that's your, that's your air uh, filter. So that's that. And remember to time these. If you've got a distributor like this, most of the motors are timed to seven and a half degrees before top dead center. So now we're going to close the deck lid. I know this all sounds funny, it sounds very basic, but I'm going to just show you. There's a little touch to it. Remember, keep the tongue in the right position here. Now you know you're closing good. You can just go down, watch you don't hit the bumper. And just, you are going to press inward just slightly and turn clockwise. And now you're locked. Cool. And you come around this way. Originally on the passenger's door, the ice lock, the ice pick would have been a solid handle, would not have a lock, a, key, a keyhole here, but we bought brand new locks for this car. So what I want to show you, the way you lock the passenger door on an early Beetle like this is just like this when you watch this handle here. This pulling up on the handle opens the door, pushing down on the inside locks it. So now you go outside here, you pull this, now it's locked. The tongue over here on this mechanism does not move. That's how you know it's locked. So what if I unlock it, now it moves. So that's how you lock the passenger door. Originally it was from the inside, but since we have keys, brand new keys for this, we'll do the same lock like we did on the driver's side. I think it's time we go for a run. What do you think? Cool. <laughs> <laughs>